Hello and welcome to Basement Fodder, the only show whose host got their Legion rings from a box of frosted flakes. I'm Ton. I'm Dave. And Dave's got his mouth full of something. <laughs> Goldfish crackers and beef jerky. He's a professional. <laughs> I'm professionally hungry, goddamn it. I can't I can't complain. I was just eating cheeseburger a minute ago. I was about to say, my inner fat kid's screaming at me. Damn it, dumb fool, damn it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You asshole. It has been a long weekend for both of us. Yeah. And I spent my weekend in Indianapolis, Indiana at the Midwest Toy Fest, and you spent yours, partially at least, down here in yeah. Columbus at Origins Game Fair. Yep. So how that, was, uh, that was a fun, interesting time. Tell us about the show. Actually, it was pretty good this year comparatively to last year. No, it only had it could only go up from last year. <laughs> That's true. Um, they when I got there, I'm pretty sure all the lines had gone through because I remember we had had problems last year with the line waiting and everything. Oh yes. Um, this year I was smart about it. I pre-regged uh, like a day or two for, but uh, like before it. But I guess that still counts. So I went through the pre-reg line, which was like one person, and was able to get my um, my badge. So there really wasn't that much to wait through uh, there. Uh, ended up meeting up with the people that I was supposed to meet up with. Um, we, uh, you know, we got into our garb and everything like that, and we started, you know, going around talking about DR and all kinds of stuff. It was a pretty fun time, but. Um, we went to the vendor room and surprisingly it, I would almost kind of say it was like, it deceptively looked like it had more stuff. Like last year. Yeah. It, it looked bigger and more utilized than last year, but I don't, I can't say for certain if there was more stuff or not. Right now, as far as like gaming stuff, I mean, it was probably about the same, except for there was, like, more uh, board games and more card games. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more, like, independent people trying to, like, you know, get their game out there, which was nice. But they had opened the other hall where not only were people selling their games, but they were also doing a fucking shit ton of beta testing. So it was it was a lot of, a lot of games being played. There was... Um, the Ed Helen people had had the dag guys come out again and, uh, you know, having them mercilessly beat the shit out of little kids, um, you know, to buy their weapons, which was always hilarious to watch. Well, there's nothing wrong with uh, severe beating of small children. Oh, no, it was, it was quite good. Um, so, I mean, it was it was a fun time. There was a lot of stuff. Uh, Sam Witwer and Chloe Dykstra were there. I uh, saw both of them before... Uh, like going to the booth like sam went by me and he had just bought some like games and was kind of like hey what's up to him and then when i was exiting the hall chloe dykstra was coming in that super sexy um you know classic trek outfit and oh my god she looked amazing but it was like you know i saw her and kind of was like you know hey <laughs> like you're amazing type thing um but yeah, it was really cool it's probably a good thing i wasn't there for that i would probably be sitting in jail right now instead of recording the show <laughs> <laughs> for tackling Chloe Dykstra. Yes, and then I probably would have got the living piss shit beat out of me by her boyfriend. <laughs> See, I don't even think you would have got to her, honestly. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she she had a nice big size looking like linebacker guy that would have knocked you on your ass. This does not shock me. I mean, like, dick in the dirt on your ass. I was like, I, I'm not even going to attempt it. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, it was pretty cool. Like, they didn't, they, you know how, like, sometimes we go to cons and there's those guys that are walking through and, like, until they get to their booth, they're just like, get away from me, nerd. Don't touch me. Like, not them. They were really cool. They were just, like, super friendly with everybody, which was awesome. Probably because they're giant uh, nerds, too. Yeah, that's why I'm saying, like, that's why I thought it was so much, like, more awesome that they had them. I was like, dude, they're both hardcore nerds. Like, that is awesome. Um, we went around uh, talking to some people, uh, both for DR and I kind of was talking about the show with people. Uh, the Basement Babe, uh, Vicky, 
uh, was talking to people too. She got us a uh, game that we're going to have to check out uh, that, you know, we'll play it and like they have a Kickstarter coming up. So we'll probably do that on another show. Uh, and then I have a, another friend who actually was working for mo- like five different gaming booths there. Wow. And uh, she, when she found out about the show, she wants to talk to us about doing some stuff. So hopefully maybe here in the future, we'll have some, some crazy fun stuff to, talk about but i mean it was pretty fun um you know got to see a bunch of people i hadn't seen in a while got to check out some new games got to see some really overpriced nerdery you know like some stuff that you're like come on dude like really but it's but it's handcrafted leather no it's not it's stamped like quit trying to act like your shit's more than it is it was it, there was a lot of stuff that i was just like man rich nerds jesus christ yeah i mean that's kind of the the thing that you would normally see at origins is just incredibly incredibly overpriced nerdery it, it is but i mean dude there was there was a lot of like expensive high caliber like high tier stuff like there was some like a lot of like handcrafted leather stuff there was the the jewelry uh the jewelry makers that did like torques and like custom stuff there was the custom leather like uh, outfit guys. There was people that were doing like custom um, wooden like carved like dice boxes or gaming boxes and stuff. Like a lot of really like if I would imagine it, this is like stuff for gamers that are like in their forties. You know that they've like now got really good jobs and can afford the higher end. You know stuff for gaming. Right. <laughs> This is not like your 20 year old, like in college, you know, nerd gamer. Like, yeah, I'm eating ramen and I got a new book. <laughs> yeah. so. so, was it uh, different being there without me? Not really, no. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> you got to remember, like, I'd been doing that for years before you and I went there. So it was like, you know. I was used to spending a week straight at Origins for doing when I did the Amp Guard demos for years. Like, I would live at Origins for the entire week. Uh, yes, the game that shall not be named. What, Amp Guard? Uh, suck guard. <laughs> so Amp I, Guard, Amp Guard. Amp I guard, heard guard. that uh, you were karmically punished for your suck guard playing by getting hurt in your back. No. Yeah, I pulled nice. a, I pulled a mu- I pulled a muscle in my back because I did a stupid move fighting wise at the amp guard thing. But yeah. I mean, it wasn't you know what that stupid move was fighting in an amp guard thing. <laughs> not really. Uh, oh, it's not really. It was just yeah. yeah. I just did a stupid move, but um, no, it was it was interesting seeing some of those guys again. Uh, some people came from like further away, uh, so that was pretty cool. I mean, it wasn't bad. It was, you know, same old, same old, pretty much. Uh, they seem to be doing a lot more, like, other types of demos, like chain mail and leather and all kinds of other classes. And that was pretty cool. Well, but, uh, yeah, it was, oh, yeah, definitely, definitely a good time. Uh, <laughs> I was supposed to stay the night and, like, you know, do some drinking with some friends, but I just wasn't really feeling it, so I ended up coming home earlier. Plus, you know, like I had to work today anyway. So I was like, uh, yeah, I don't want to try and wake up and like leave the convention center in Columbus while everybody else is trying to leave the convention center. So it was just easier to leave at like two in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Even though I imagine there was some sort of like graduation that just happened because it was like, Jesus Christ, every like. 18 year old to like 27 year old was like it was party central around there oh they're like bussing in like super dressed up you know tool bags and slut whores uh, it was quite interesting hey tool bags and slut whores all right you know you know it. i'm wrong with that so, yeah but it was a good time um I only really made two purchases. Uh, you know, I got that one little uh, mystery Funko uh, Mal, Captain Mal from Firefly for like a quarter. That was awesome. But my big win was uh, getting the art of Dragon Age Inquisition book, like brand new, wrapped, 
uh, for twenty bucks. That was. Yeah, that like, was I was like, okay, I don't need to there. buy anything. Yeah, I was like, I'm good. I don't need to buy anything else now. Plus, there wasn't really much I was looking for. Like, I thought there would be more stuff there that I wanted, but I was just like, you know, I'm not really. They didn't seem to have a lot of like. Uh, remember the big uh, one we used to go to to like look at the books and like the minis and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. That uh, I don't think that stuff was there anymore. Wasn't there last year either? Yeah, so I mean, it was like either buy new, buy indie, or you know, that's pretty much your choices. There wasn't a lot of like secondhand stuff going on there, so I was just like, me, not trying to spend sixty bucks on a book right now, like for a new game. You know, well, we're kind of in a period where we're not really playing as much as we had been as well, so it's not really justifiable. Yeah. Plus we, well, I mean, things it's, we haven't even started yet. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Uh, actually, I did see a bunch of Traveler's books and like some other stuff, but that was the thing. It was like it's summer. There's a lot of cons, oh, a lot of stuff, cons. trips going on. So I mean, it's like this is our slow period for gaming. Usually in the like fall and winter when we pick back up. Yeah, slow. To you know, because we have way too much going on right now. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, that's fair. That makes sense. So. It was pretty fun. I mean, you know, I pleasantly surprised I didn't spend as nearly, like, God, not even a quarter as much money as I thought I would. I'm glad you had a good time. You were you were missed on my end. Um, even you know, it, you may not be gay yeah. for me, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I am friend gay for you. I know. Uh, yeah, we uh, got the invitation kind of at the last minute to uh, have a, a set up a table at the Midwest Toy Fest in Indianapolis, and. I uh, I knew that you were doing Origins, but I thought, you know, it, it was a good opportunity to be in a new show that was a big show and a yeah. nice opportunity to go out to Indianapolis, which I hadn't done since I was a teenager. So I thought, what the hell? And I enlisted the help of our good friend Tara, who is a graphic artist and who took some prints with her as well. Um, if you guys have seen, of course, our Cthulhu font logo, which is well loved by many, and yeah. uh, the actual the main logo for the Basement Fodder show. She did that one as well. Um, you can check out her work on uh, dragonosx.deviantart.com. Uh, I shared the link earlier today, and it's definitely worth checking out. Um, yeah, I saw some of the prints that you guys took, and they were yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah, some really awesome prints. Uh, and we w- drove up, and it was a pretty decent drive. It's probably like a eh, two and a half hours, somewhere around there. Uh, from where you're at, yeah. From where I'm at, yeah, it's a little shy of two hours. So, yeah, it's yeah. probably about two and a half for you guys. Yeah, it's probably about two and a half, somewhere like two hours and 45 minutes, something to that effect. Um, it was a decent drive. Um, we went up there, got a motel, and uh, did the show on Saturday, which Saturday was uh, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. That was quarter, That was the like uh, preview night because the main show itself was on Sunday. Yeah. So, like, in order to get on on the Saturday, you had to buy the two-day ticket. Um, oh. And there was a lot of – it was actually – I expected it to be sizable from the floor plan, but we've been deceived by that before. <laughs> like, we, let's not uh, – the con that w- may not be spoken of. I'm caught on the cop. Uh, <laughs> we've been fooled by floor plans before. So <laughs> I was uh, wary of that. But actually, no, this turned out to be absolutely fantastic. Um, of course, we had Michael Trent on the show, the guy who promoted the show. And uh, fantastic guy. And I watched that guy run his ass off for two straight days, uh, making sure that everybody had what they needed and making sure people were getting where they needed to go and working hard. I bet he dropped 15, 20 pounds in water weight just running around that hotel. <laughs> so, And surprisingly, one of the few shows that we've done that you were actually blessed with Wi-Fi. <laughs> yes, good Wi-Fi. Not just Wi-Fi, but good Wi-Fi. I mean, I was, like, listening to Pandora all day and, you know, <laughs> having, you know, Facebook and, and – uh, and eBay access to the point where I was regularly uploading vlogs, which is what I'd like to do normally when we're at shows, but I can't do it as much because of the fucking distinct lack of Wi-Fi at most of these shows. Mm-hmm. But uh, we were lucky enough to get a table, and um, we were set up next to the booth for the Indie PopCon, which is a big independent, I'm sorry, it was a big uh, Indiana uh, pop culture and comic convention that's coming up at the yeah. end of June. And uh, lots of celebrity guests this year, uh, just to name a few, Edward James Olmos of the uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. show and Battlestar Galactica, uh, the Flash Gordon of the Flash Gordon movie himself, Sam Jones, 
Fuck yeah. <laughs> Zach Galligan of the Gremlins movie. Yeah. And many, many more. Um, you can check out uh, IndiePopCon.com. But uh, there's a good possibility. Uh, I'm not going to jinx it yet, but there's a good possibility we might be going down for that one as well. Yeah. Um, with uh, We may be, be maybe getting hooked up with press passes, which is really cool. Uh, Hopefully. So we had a good time. Uh, <laughs> it was an interesting weekend. Uh, I was propositioned by a prostitute. Yeah, you told me about that. Like, and not even like one of those like skeezy style ones. Yeah. Like, you were literally like, okay, you got to tell the story because it is like the most like business like <laughs> casual. It's like business casual style propositions I've ever heard of. So we stayed at this little super eight motel that was um, probably about ten minutes away from the the hotel where the actual convention was at. And in hindsight, yeah. we probably should have just stayed at the convention hotel. Like, it was about twenty five dollars difference in price as far as like. It was a little bit pricier to stay at the hotel, but like if if we do the show again next year, which I hope we get to, uh, I will be staying at the hotel, <laughs> at the same hotel. But yeah. um, we stayed at this little the Super Eight, and there's nothing wrong with the room. It was very clean, um, you know, all that stuff, uh, air conditioning, and strong, and all that. And in the morning, um, this was like uh, after the first day because we went down on Saturday, and then we did the first day of the show, and then went back to the motel, and yeah. then. Uh, Sunday morning, I went down to uh, hunt out some breakfast, probably about 7 a.m. in the hotel lobby. And uh, they're doing the continental breakfast, you know, like the uh, cinnamon buns and the waffles and that kind of a thing. So I made my breakfast. Uh, I had some waffles and a bowl of cereal. Uh, And I was, you know, sitting down at one of the little tables. They basically just had like three or four little two-person tables. And, uh, you know, there was a couple other tables in there and they were filled up with some less than savory looking truck drivers. Uh, and so I was avoiding speaking to anyone by intently staring at my phone and pretending to be doing something. So <laughs> I was doing, you know, having my breakfast and this, uh, young lady walked over and, uh, you know, I have to say she did not look like a prostitute. Like, I don't know what prostitutes are supposed to look like necessarily, but she didn't look skeezy. Let's put it that way. She didn't look skeezy. She didn't look dressed like overly pro- provocatively or anything like that. In fact, she was wearing a hoodie um, and not a dirty one or anything like that. Like, she was wearing like a nice clean looking hoodie. She had like, um, you know, kind of dyed dark maroon hair, like very kind of alternative looking. She probably was about maybe 22, 23, somewhere around there, I would say. And um, I had an empty spot across from me because Tara was still asleep up in the room. And um, she asked me if she could uh, use the extra seat, if she could sit there. And I said, yeah, sure, whatever. And, you know. I went back to pretending to be doing something on my phone. And uh, then she <laughs> pitched to me that she was uh, uh, looking for some um, – she wanted to know if I was looking for some female company. And very <laughs> – I mean just out of nowhere at 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Yeah, that's like random <laughs> shit. She – I mean she just very matter-of-factly was like, uh, you know – uh, if you're looking for a good time, like, uh, I am looking to provide it. <laughs> and then she explained to me that if I was looking for an oral good time, it would be $50, which I thought was fair. And yeah, <laughs> I mean, depending on her skill level, I suppose. And then if I was looking for a, mm, let's see, a vaginal good time, <laughs> then I would be looking at $150. And I thought, man, that was a hell of a jump from, you know, mouth to vagina there. But I understand. Yeah, I was like, man, your your jazzler better be amazing. Like, <laughs> and uh, then she also mentioned something called a trucker special, but she did not go into detail on that one. Now, were you curious? Did you want to know what it was? I was very curious, but I did not want it to seem like I was interested. Yeah, because you're like, no, no. Curiosity and, always equals bad in this type of situation. Like it just it threw me for such a fucking loop because it was just so. It was crazy. like that beer fest moment. It's like a ZJ. Yeah. If you don't know what it is, you can't afford it. It's <laughs> just like it was just so very matter of fact and very like you know kind of antiseptic. Like it was it wasn't like a sexy sort of a thing or anything. Like she wasn't like hey baby or anything like that. It was just like very matter of fact, kind of like a, this, this is a business transaction. I will swaggle your cock for money. Or I will sit upon it and rotate for money if you'd like to provide. Yeah, and she's not even like, you know, dressed all hoochified. No. She's just like, hey, what's up? You know, I'm in a hoodie. You know, and so I'll I give you a blowjob for 50 bucks. Yeah, I politely declined as much as possible. Yeah. Politely, as politely as possible. And then 
shoveled down the rest of my breakfast and bolted back for the room. <laughs> now, when you said no, like, did she just still hang out or? No, she was totally like, uh, she was like, okay, well, if you change your mind, like, I'll be around here or whatever. And like, and then she just sort of like meandered away. And uh, I just was racking my brain to think like, what about me sitting there eating breakfast at seven o'clock in the morning screamed that I needed to have my dick sucked? You're a dude? For money. <laughs> <laughs> You're a dude. <laughs> Did I have? I mean, I, do I really stink of that much desperation that it looks like at seven a.m. I'm really hankering to pay you for a blowjob? Like you're you're a dude at seven in the morning. Dudes always want a blowjob. Yeah, they don't want to pay for it though. Well, I mean that's negotiable for her. <laughs> like it ain't negotiable. I'd have been like, hey, for an extra. Like for an extra ten bucks, can I just put my bowl of cereal on your head while <laughs> you know, like I continue to eat? Like, is that is that doable? Like, is that the trucker special? I mean, I spent the rest of the day racking my brain as to what the trucker special might be. Because, <laughs> like, man, that's the thing. I'm like, man, trucker special, and I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, truckers are nasty I, motherfuckers. Yeah, oh. So it's like. <laughs> It reminds me of the Bloodhound Gang song, The Lap Dance is so much better when the stripper's crying. Like, that's all that yeah. kept went through my head. Yeah, that's just repeat. like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, and then my favorite slogan, the next best thing to lube is pressure. Oh. You know, I'm like, pressure. Pressure. <laughs> what do you So I'm just like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> that's cool. Now, see, I, though, this is one of those things, too, though, because it might be, she might have been an undercover. I mean, it might have been, but I, I certainly wasn't going to uh, go anything in the in the positive. Let's put it that way. No, I know. That's what I was saying. So, I mean, like, you know, that's why she might have been playing like that. But, man, that's just crazy. Like, that's super like, oh, look, it's business casual. I'm like, <laughs> you don't wear anything slutty. Like, I can't even see your cleavage. You're wearing, like, a hoodie and shit. I'm mm-hmm. like, man, if you're going to come over and, like, offer, you know, to give up the candy for money and stuff, like, at least give me a fucking preview. Like... <laughs> Let me see what I'm working with here. Cause like she was wearing a loose hoodie. It's not like I could really see, you know, anything as far as what she was working with. Yeah. I mean, not that that would have mattered, but, <laughs> but you know, you, you think about it, they're getting smarter, dress less slutty. So that way, you know, somebody can't be like, Oh, there's a prostitute. She's coming in trying to get, you know, I mean, I kept racking my brain as to why it was like, why I was the one that she was. And the only thing that I could think of is that looking around the rest of the guys in the room, I was probably the most, the, the least likely to kill her and bury her in a shallow grave. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> like, no scuzzy truckers. I'm good. So yeah, it was a hell of a thing. And of course, like that just does something to the rest of your day. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. You're like, right. It, it really does something to the rest of your day. <laughs> yeah. But before that, uh, Saturday night after we finished up with it with night one, which actually, I mean, there was a lot of, of, of crowd through there. I mean, quite a few people. And it was a, a really great setup. There was a big room for artists and, uh, and you know, creators and things like that. And there was a big room for vendors. And then there was a hallway full of vendors, too. And then we were actually out in the hallway with a lot of other exhibitors, like other podcasts and the 501st Legion for the Star Wars guys. And, uh, you know, a couple other vendors here and there. So, like, it was all kind of, um, you know, separate but done in a good way. Very super organized. Everybody was, you know, very super organized. They brought us, like, little gift bags with bottles of water and gum and mints and all that stuff. You know, anything you would, you know, need. Uh, They had, you know, security patrolling around. They had lots of volunteers. There was a big area for cosplayers. In fact, I got a chance to take pictures with and talk to a lot of really cool cosplayers. Um, and yeah, I, I saw that it was partially because one of the promoters, um, super Casey, who's a cosplayer, she was one of the promoters of the show. So it was definitely, um, one that, you know, was involving heavy cosplay stuff. You guys can yeah. check her out on facebook.com, um, slash super Casey cosplay. That's K Y C E. Uh, she is, uh, really, she was really sweet. Um, she came by the table a few times to talk to us and, um, you know, make sure that everybody was getting what they needed. Uh, and, you know, if any picture opportunities, things like that wanted to be done. Uh, so it was all very cool for that. Uh, Asking if anybody needed a young lady in a hoodie and a truck yeah. special. You know? <laughs> if anybody had seen a young lady in a hoodie uh, offering blowjobs for money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, night one was a lot of fun. There was a lot of people through. Uh, we did really well with our dice game. That was a lot of fun. Um, got to see some cool cosplay. Um <laughs> Uh, oh, God. I, I struggle to tell this part of the story 
because like I don't know if this person I mean they took a card but I don't know if they would listen to the show or not but okay now I I, I don't have a huge amount of experience with cosplayers so I don't know if cosplayers try to be in character as much like I don't know if it's considered like LARPing where you like play a character as much or if you're just sort of like eh. I'm me in a costume I mean, maybe I think for, like, kids they do, and, like, you know, if they're on stage, you know, doing, like, the competitions they are, but I think, like, just generally, it's, I don't know how much they, from what I've seen, they don't get into it too much like that. But. Well, so Tara and I were sitting at the table, and uh, this this gentleman walked up, and he was a, a sizable fella. Um, like, I mean, compare, even compared to me, he was pretty damn sizable. Like, I would say he was more sizable than I am. And he had a jet black suit on, and he looked like he was maybe about twenty. And he sa- sauntered up to the table and asked if uh, we were if uh, we had spotted any suspicious activity. And I was confused because he did not look old enough to be a policeman or anything like that, or a security person. Uh, you know, he had like a very childlike face, I would say, and like uh, kind of apple cheeks and glasses and whatnot. And then he proceeded to pull something out of his jacket, and it was his shield badge. And he had a lanyard on, and he was uh, basically cosplaying one of the Patton Oswald S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Oh, God. And he was in character. Like, he was speaking completely in character the entire time. And uh, it was a little awkward, <laughs> to say the least. I, th- I can imagine it might have been awkward, but I think that's because, like, it's such, since it's still so fresh... And because, like, as far as, like, physical, there wasn't a lot physically to that, uh, that role. He had to, you, to cosplay that character, he probably had to add the verbal stuff. You know what, I get that. The thing that made it awkward was that he kind of just stood there for a really long time. Like a Uh, really, really really long time. Like, just huddling around the booth? Yeah, and just kind of, like... Like, I was, like, trying to make a little small talk, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it just, he was very, very standy. Like, very, <laughs> stand there and, and and create awkward silence. And I don't do well with those, as you well know. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, Tara, in that, in that case, unfortunately, is not much help. <laughs> because she was just chuckling <laughs> under her breath. So eventually he meandered away, and but he did meander back past our booth many times uh, that day. Like, I would say at least six or seven more times. And he asked the uh, similar questions uh, at least four of those times. Um, and I was just like, wow, I mean, I guess if he didn't say anything, he was committed. Oh, yeah, definitely. But uh, there was some really, really fun uh, cosplay. I got a chance to walk around the uh, the artist's room um, and meet some of the artists there. Of course, a, a big favorite of ours, Stuart Sager, who uh, does amazing prints and is a comic artist as well, was there. And I got a chance to talk to him. He actually ran the Drink and Draw, which he uh, very heavily tried to convince me to do. But since we weren't staying at the hotel, I didn't want to take part in it. Uh, yeah. I'd have to like get hammered and <laughs> drive back to the motel, which would have been fail. Uh, like, hey, man, <laughs> get back to the hotel. But he was very cool, and I you know, talked to him about coming on the show, and he's definitely uh, interested in doing so. Um, he's got some new projects coming out, which I'm not allowed to speak about, but when those projects come out, he is definitely interested in coming on and, and spreading the word that way. So, uh, yeah, that made me very excited, and I'm sure that you're excited about that, too, as big a fan as you are. Yeah, definitely. So that was cool, and I also got to meet... Um, Andy Cordy, who uh, does the Manor web comic, um, he's actually a friend of, uh, of a friend of a friend in the way that he's a friend of Dirk's, and yeah. uh, he does a a horror web comic that looks kind of interesting. He had some collected collected editions there, but I didn't get a chance to pick any up. Um, but we will definitely uh, I'll be checking out the web comic, and we'll try to have him on the show, uh, you know, sometime at a later date as well. I got a chance to meet Ron Braun. He's a cartoonist and illustrator. He does a kind of interesting, very cartoony style. He does a lot of things with platypus, like different little platypus cosplay type things. And so, like, um, I ended up with a uh, getting a print from him that's a Green Lantern platypus that is very cool. <laughs> and uh, also a Hulk platypus that was very cool. And a uh, nice guy. Uh, that was really cool to meet him. 
Um, I got to spend some time talking to uh, Matt Skillern from Skillful Studios, uh, who does an interesting uh, comic book that I got. A, he gave me an issue of to um, check out. So when we get a chance to read that, we'll uh, do a review for it and try to get him on the show as well. Uh, one of the ones I'm the most excited about, as far as a comic goes, is a comic called Henchman, which uh, I got from Ryan Howe. And if you look at uh, their website, it's henchmancomic.com. And also related to it, there's a, uh, a tabletop game as well. So oh, yeah. that's right up our street, <laughs> a comic yeah. that has a tabletop game related to it. Yeah. And the comic itself is kind of an interesting premise. It is kind of reminiscent of Venture Brothers, and it's being about henchmen for a supervillain. Um, and I got uh, the one-shot comic from him, but there's also a four-issue miniseries as well that you can get. You can check that out at henchmancomic.com or and uh, also robotpaper.com, which is the publisher. So oh, always good, always good. What's that? I said always good. Yeah, that, that sounds really really cool. Um, yeah. Damn it, there should be more comic comic book tabletop game combo. <laughs> I agree, absolutely. I got to talk to a lot of other. Uh, I got to talk to some other podcasters. That was really cool. Um, yeah, wasn't there like a little like podcast mixer thing? Or... Um, actually, that's going to be an indie popcon. Um, okay, yeah, that's what you were telling. Yeah, me at about, indie popcon, yeah. they're actually having an entire uh, part of the convention that's uh, basically like cosplay row, or not cosplay row, but a uh, podcast row. And so there's going to be nice. multiple podcasts there, and uh, they they wanted to offer us a table, but unfortunately, they're all booked up. But um, they're also having um, they're having a stage there where you can um, book to do live shows. Nice. Like up on a stage in front of people and stuff. And then they also uh, are going to be having like what they're calling like a podcast mixer where uh, podcasters can get together and talk with artists and writers and things like that who would be interested in doing the shows. And uh, I got to talk to the guys from the Failed Task Podcast, which is a gaming podcast. Um, you guys can check them out at uh, failedtaskpodcast.com. They look pretty fun and interesting. They were uh, nice, nice fellows. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I actually ran into uh, a friend of yours um, who's a tattoo artist and, and, and uh, a painter as well, uh, Rick DeShane. Oh, yeah. And, oh, which I was very surprised to see him because he usually is at Origins. Yeah, but he lives in Indy. So yeah. if he had a choice, he would probably be there because it's less, you know, less for him. Plus, honestly, I think he probably would do better there than he would at Origins. Because, like, last time we were there, they had shoved off, like, the artists to, like, you know, Nicaragua and shit. So, I mean, you know, it's less gas, better exposure, you know, home ground. Like, yeah, it makes sense that he was there. I mean, he uh, was definitely getting a shit, uh, a lot of business. So, Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, this does not surprise me. Yeah. Um, so that was a lot of fun. I got a chance on uh, today, on the second day, to talk to a lot of the cosplayers. Um, one of the ones I got to talk to for a long time was, um, <clears throat> her name is, uh, Ashlyn Marie and she does a lot of interesting sort of cosplay. She does Mary Jane. She does, um, black cat. She also does a steampunk black cat, which is very cool. Um, she's done Skyrim stuff. She does things from League of Legends. Um, so lots of very interesting stuff. Uh, she was very cool. Very nice. You guys can check her out on Facebook at, uh, Ashlyn Marie cosplay. Um, I also got to talk to Skyrim Fox, who's very cool as well. Um, she was, was doing, I believe, I'm trying to remember what she was doing because the, the pod, the um, I keep saying I keep transposing podcasters and cosplayers, but the cosplayers were doing <laughs> a lot of like outfit changes, so it was hard for me to keep track of who had what. But uh, yeah, you do get the ones like normally it's like they have one for for each day. Yeah, but I imagine since it was only really like one day like one and a half days they probably bought like brought like you know enough that they could switch out every few hours too yeah and there was um a, a cosplay group called cause awesome studios with, uh, that i got to uh talk to and one of their uh cosplayers was um doing the uh i mean i cannot remember her name but it's the daughter from the incredibles the one that's invisible Oh yeah, was it uh, Violet? Or Violet, something? yeah. Uh, there was, she was yeah. doing Violet, and I got some pictures with her. Uh, and then one of theirs was doing uh, the uh, Spider Woman, the Jessica Drew Spider Woman, the uh, the seventies version with the red and yellow. Yeah, nice. which is my favorite, of course. Um, yeah. So I got some pictures with her. She was very, very cool. Um, there was some, some male cosplayers there as well. There was two that I took pictures of that were doing uh, Arkham Asylum Batman villains, and one of them was they were basically in the orange jumpsuits from Arkham. 
and one was doing yeah. Mr. Freeze and one was doing Joker, and the Mr. Freeze was very cool. I enjoyed the way that they did that. Yeah. Um, they were having a big old giant cosplay contest, and it was for all, uh, you know, they had different categories like TV and movie or comics or video games, things like that. Um, one of the most creative ones that actually won actually won first place in the TV and movie category was some of this this lady cosplayed the teacher from the magic school bus cartoon zombified oh that sounds sweet she had like complete you know full-on zombie makeup she had the very you know the outfit very similar to the one that the teacher wears and then she had like the steering wheel of the bus around her neck like <laughs> as if it had been a horrible accident then she had like a, a dead stuffed lizard she was carrying around because of the lizard in the yeah bus. i was gonna say did she have the lizard yeah, yeah and then when they asked her on stage like where the children was uh she was like they didn't make it <laughs> like <laughs> So she was very, that was a very creative one. I thought was very, very cool. Uh, nice. Sarah took a ton of pictures of the cosplay contest. And when she forwards those to me, I'll, I'll post them up on our Facebook. But nice. uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And there was a Hellboy who won best in show. And he was, um, he did a sort of a medieval Hellboy. It was um, kind of like a Skyrim uh, influenced, um, you know, that sort of a thing. And like, it didn't, I don't know if the pictures did it justice, but it really in person looked fantastic. Yeah, and it was a completely homemade costume too. Like he'd done it all, and uh, what I thought was really cool is one of the things that they did for the winners of the uh, each category was not only did they get like a gift card or a money, a cash amount, but they also got uh, a free big giant sheet of Warbla, which is like the um, the stuff that they make armor out of, like the uh, yeah, they of... like yeah, they heat it down yeah. and shape it and stuff, yeah. Yeah, so they had actually gotten that donated by the Warbler company, and so they they all got like free giant sheets of Warbler, which if you bought them would probably have been about three hundred dollars a piece. Yeah, I was gonna say those things are not cheap. Like, so that was really really cool. Uh, yeah. A lot of the cosplayers stopped by the booth. Um, I did a lot of videos while I was there. Did a lot of vlogs, things like that. And as I was doing them, um, the promoters were posting them on the web on the web page of the uh, of the show. And it was it was nearing towards the end of day two, and I was sitting there doing something at the computer, and we were, you know, I think someone was playing the dice game, and this guy ran up all excitedly, and he was like, hey, I got to get a picture with this guy. And I was like, what now? And he was like, I keep seeing you in all these videos all day. Let's get a picture together. You're awesome, man. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> like, fair enough. And so I tossed my mask back on, and, uh, Took a picture with him, and man, he was the most excited that I've ever seen anybody to see me anywhere. <laughs> Fair enough. All and right. he's never even heard the show. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I don't even... Like, damn, what's he might not be as fuck? excited. <laughs> yeah. But that was really cool. I I did it, I kind of walked around in my mask for a while to see, like, if there would be a different reaction. And I did get a lot more attention from those who were the cosplay people <laughs> that, like, they were much more interested in talking when I was walking around with a mask on too. In fact, one of them actually thought I had a face paint on until I took it off because, you know, yeah. my mask is kind of like Kabuki face paint looking. Yeah. But that, I mean, it turned out really well. I had an absolute blast. Um, everything worked out well. There was all kinds of cool toys there. I, you know, I posted pictures of a lot of stuff that I got, but I found some really cool stuff for my collection and, uh, you know, got to see some dealers that we know the hive of villainy dealer was there. He's cool. We, We've had a table next to him before. He was not, however, setting up the entire day. I was impressed. All right. <laughs> got that shit on lockdown. Got it. But, yeah, we had, we had a really good time, and I, and I do hope that we get invited back for the next one. Yeah, that would be cool. And I really do hope that uh, everything comes through with the press passes for Indie PopCon because that's looking to be one hell of an interesting convention as well. Cool, cool. That one is at the end of the month, uh, the 27th and 28th of June. And I also um, picked up some information on a few other uh, conventions that are happening in and around that time period. Um, the Days of the Dead Horror Convention is actually happening that same weekend. And that one is uh, at the same hotel that this uh, event was, the Wyndham West. Um, Rick yeah. Flair, the Nature Boy, is going to be there. At the Day of the Dead. At the Day of the Dead, yeah. And also Bill Mosley, a uh, horror actor. The twins from The Shining yeah. are going to be there. Like It looks like a hell of a show. Um, <clears throat> Tobin Bell, uh, Jigsaw from the Saw movies is going to be there. Kane Hodder is also going to be there. Uh, yeah. And then uh, the Tall Man of Phantasm is also going to be there. Interesting. So that one looks like a hell of a thing, too. Yeah. 
And uh, there's a couple other conventions that I picked up information on. There's a con called Grasp Comic Expo. That one is going to be also June 27th and 28th. That one's in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I thought that one was worth noticing because as I was looking on the back at who was going to be there, whose name should I see but Dirk motherfucking Manning. <laughs> so apparently... Dirk is going to be at that show on the twenty, uh, the twenty sixth to I'm sorry, the twenty seventh and the twenty eighth in uh, Grand Rapids. So everybody that is a Dirkophile, you can go and check that one out. Up oh, the man boy prince himself, the he of the hair that cannot be moved. <laughs> oh no no, that, uh, I'm going to take that as a personal challenge. I'm going to move the hair. Like, I'm going to find a way. Like... Well, if you guys are Manning fans, you you can check out. Um, uh, the podcast of our friends, uh, Michelle and Crystal, their show, The Mistress of Man- Mayhem and Chaos. They're going to be having Dirk on here pretty soon. And I think it's, uh, uh, I think the, the show has already been recorded because they record a lot in a row. Uh, so I think it's uh, maybe next week or I don't know. It possibly could have already gone out. I'm very behind the times right now because I've had uh, zero sleep. So Yeah, I, I would know. I don't I don't listen to podcasts. So. <laughs> I listen to the podcast, you know. Um, no, uh, the other one that I, I'm not behind it. 110%. <laughs> the other one that I wanted to mention was the grand Rapids comic con, which is also out in Michigan. Now that one's October 16th through the 18th. And that's not one that we would uh, necessarily be going to, cause that's right around the time that we would be doing the Ohio toy and comic show for our friends at Roma and also our birthday time, which we don't uh, go to places like Michigan for our birthday. <laughs> I don't go to places like Michigan for any day. <laughs> like, but if you guys want more information on any of those shows, you can check out our Facebook page. I will post up the links, and those all sound interesting. And that's basically all I have for the con stuff. Now, there was a couple other things that we were talking about before we went on the air that you wanted to discuss. Do you want to go ahead and start us off on that? Sure. Damn it. You interrupted Damn it. my gold fishing. <laughs> Fuck your goldfish. <laughs> all right. Well, now, you know, now because you're doing that, you're just all going to get to listen to me eat some goldfish for a quick sec. Hold on. So that would be different from what we've been doing for the last uh, 40 minutes. Yeah, because I'm going to chew really loudly. Again, that would be different somehow. <laughs> loudly chewing is delicious. That's so good. Oh, no, mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Okay. So... Just poking around on Facebook, you know, lo- looking at all the fucking comic and movie sites that we, um, you know, we're friends with and shit. Saw some uh, some interesting stuff that's come up. Um, one of them is now. There's been a little thing as far as um, Kevin Smith is really known for you know his movies, but he's also known for you know doing writing comic books too, and. Um, He's never really got to direct uh, uh, anything like comic book wise that he's really wanted to, and apparently recently he started talking about if he could, what would he like? What would he like to do? And apparently he's really adamant about wanting to do a question like movie. And I know you're you like the question. I like the question. The question's a cool character. Oh, absolutely. But it was like, question fan. Oh yeah. But it was interesting to hear the feedback from people like most people are down with him doing a question thing like they, you know, they love Kevin and, you know, they're like, hey, if he likes this character enough, that'd be sweet. But there seems to be a lot of back and forth on whether or not it should be a movie or a TV series. Um, You know, I, I think the question would work really well episodically. I just don't know if the market right now with the way that uh, the characters of that nature are being treated with what's happened with Constantine and some of the other shows. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if it would work right now, but I think it would, it would make both a good movie and a good show. But I personally, if I had a choice would probably pick show. Yeah, it would definitely be a show. I love one of the things that he talked about was, um, uh, why he likes the question. He's like, cause like, say you're walking down an alleyway and then all of a sudden, you know, Batman shows up out of nowhere, ready to kick your ass. You're like, Oh shit, it's Batman. All right. Well, you know, like, let's do this. He's like, now you're walking down that same dark, scary alley and some dude in a trench coat with no face pops out. Who would you be more afraid of? And then he was like me, I would say the faceless dude in the trench coat. And I'm like, yes, yeah, as, as 
as scary as Batman tries to make himself, <laughs> he is a dude in a giant bat suit. So, I mean, it is kind of like, okay. This cannot be denied. Seeing a dude in a normal suit, like, expressly, but no face would freak me out because it always reminds me of that Bruce Tim episode of Clayface. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that to me was a really good and really creepy, like dark, you know, Batman, the animated series episode. So it was like, yeah, dude in giant bat suit. I just think you're crazy dude with no face. That would freak the shit out of me. <laughs> It'd be like, okay, that's scary. Though. Nah, I can't argue with that. And, but uh, I'm a huge fan yeah. of the question. Uh, I mean, it's some of the, some of one of my all time favorite DC characters for sure. And I would love to see it actually get some attention. I mean, he's a great, he's an uber detective. Like, he is a super really good detective, and he is a really damn good fighter. Like, that's the thing. Like, people are like, oh, but it's the question, what does he do? And I'm like, pretty much what Batman does, but without being in a giant bat suit. <laughs> you know? He looks, I think he looks way more dapper. He's Dapper Dan. The Dapper Dan man. Yeah. Dapper Dan, man. I don't want to um, I'm a Dapper Dan, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so another one is, um, and you know her last name better. I can't say it. You'll have to say her name. Uh, the Carla. Oh, Carla Gugino. Yeah, Carla Gugino. Uh, now, she, is, she has been in uh, some comic book stuff. She, you know, she was in Watch, uh, Watchmen. Yeah. And... Um, and then, uh, what is it? Sucker Punch, which is based off comic style stuff. Um, she's been in a bunch, but she's never been in anything like super big as far as like, you know, but apparently she wants to be in the new DC universe as far as like movie roles wise. And uh, they were going down the list of like, OK, say that she is, you know, in there Um because she is good friends with Zack Snyder, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, which roles would be good for her? Like, which roles do you think she could do? And, of course, they brought up Catwoman. And some people were like, well, she's too old. She's like, but look how old Batman is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, have, you have an old seasoned Batman. You would probably have a seasoned Catwoman. I I think Catwoman would be okay. It's just a question of ability of because her age, can she do a lot of the stuff uh, that Catwoman would be able to do? The the level of flexibility and, you know, acrobat type stuff be questionable. Uh, another character they brought up, and this one I actually think she could do because in Sucker Punch she had the accent, would be uh, Talia. Yes. I think she could play a really interesting Talia Uh you know, like an older Talia, you know, maybe uh, Damian Wayne, you know, either happened or is about to happen, something like that. But I think she could she could do that character really well. And then they they brought up some other ones like Huntress and all that stuff. But I think the main two are either Catwoman or Talia. But I think she's really she's pushing hard. Like she really wants to be, uh, you know, in in the universe. I mean, and I, I think they should be fun for Yeah, it. absolutely. I mean, I, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm, I'm going to be really avant-garde. I'm going to say Plastic Man. Pla- plastic Man? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, hey, girls can be Plastic Man, too. Yeah, but nobody wants to be Plastic Man. I want to be Plastic Man. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to be Peter Chris Lois. Not even Peter Chris wants to be Peter Chris. <laughs> <laughs> true. Nobody wants to be Peter Chris or Plastic Man. Plastic Man rules. Judge your horse mouth. Yeah. Okay, which would you rather have? Would... Plastic Man or Reed Richards? Reed Richards. Bullshit, you hate Reed Richards. Yeah, but I'd still rather take him over Plastic Man. Oh, he's way more shit. useful. No, he's way more useful. You would never voluntarily be anywhere with Reed Richards. No, but if it came down to Plastic Man or Reed Richards, Reed Richards... I would rather deal with his like douchebaggery smartness and know that he's somewhat level of useful as to Plastic Man, who I literally think is like a bigger joke than Deadpool. Oh, man, I thought we were friends. He's the <laughs> he's the only comic book hero that like his costume literally makes me cringe because he's literally running around Donald ducking it. 
<laughs> He's got a little pants on. <laughs> He's got booty shorts and a long sleeve T-shirt. Like, who does, like, I don't know. Whoever designed him was, like, bad. That was the 50s. You know what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. Like, if we're going to take a stretchable character from DC, I'll take Elongated Man. Yeah, I, would, I probably would, too. Uh, I would say Huntress would be a good choice for her. Um, I could see her being Huntress, like the the kind of the 90s Birds of Prey era Huntress. Uh, she's yeah. a little old, I think the only but I yeah that's look the problem that's the age like Huntress is around the same age as like Dick Grayson and stuff so I mean you know she would have to be somebody that would be on par with uh you know Ben Affleck Batman which would only leave Catwoman or Talia so but. Huntress would be an interesting one to have, but they were really skeptical on that one because it's like, man, she's kind of deep into the Gotham characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, I you can know, see as her far being as Gordon, like Oracle. Yeah, especially in the world where Affleck is Batman. I still say she's for that. She's too old. I mean, in the world where Affleck is Batman, I mean Barbara's younger than Bruce, but she's not that much younger. She's on par with Grayson. Mm, I'd say she's a little older than Dick. Uh, from all the comics that I've read, man, she's either like maybe a year older than Dick Grayson. Like they're around the same age. Yeah, fair enough. She wasn't she wasn't that much older. But I mean, you know, again, when you look at the Birds of Prey show, mm-hmm. she was She's portrayed as know, an older but, character on there. Yeah. So That'd be interesting to see her as a redhead, though. Interesting, yes, it would be interesting. <laughs> and by interesting, I mean... <laughs> yeah. um, now, one that we do have an update for is, like, I was going to talk about Statham. Uh, they were talking about Jason Statham possibly uh, being, you know, being looked at to play Bullseye in the season two for Daredevil, you know, if they were... Uh, but you told me that recently... Like, I guess within the last day or so that he kind of took himself out of the running for yeah, that. Yeah, there really wasn't a lot of detail on it, but yeah, he just sort of was like, yeah, that's not happening. I mean, honestly, I can imagine, I mean, even with them doing shooting whole seasons, you know, for one-off type thing, it's still you're doing a season of a show, and Bullseye is a major character, so they would try and lock him in to come back multiple times. So it's like... He probably just doesn't want that level of commitment. Like, that's a lot. So, I mean, I understand. No, I mean, I got now the, too. Yeah. Now, one that recently, well, I would say it happened, like, in this past week was uh, Ron Perlman got on, like, Twitter and Facebook and basically, you know, sounded the rally call for uh, Hellboy 3. Yes, which, and everybody needs to fucking answer it because Hellboy 3 needs to happen. That's and that's what everybody's been saying. Now, if you guys agree, and I've you know been sharing this on my you know my personal page, and we've been sharing it on the show and stuff like that, is for all you tweeters and twitters and all those motherfuckers, is uh, hashtag Hellboy three. You know, I mean, it happened for Deadpool. I mean, the fans, even Ryan Reynolds said the fans got that movie made. So I mean. If the fans are there and they can rally around Hellboy 3, it could get made, you know. Uh, I know he said he's down to do it. Doug Jones said he's down to do it. Uh, I think Selma Blair hasn't responded as far as whether or not she's down to do it or not. But, I mean, she might, you know, come later on, depending on seeing on what the fan support is. Yeah, I mean, I heard but, she's always down for something dirty. <laughs> very true very true <laughs> now in some sad news oh sad news Constantine is officially dead yeah you know what I mean like I get it is it is sad because I like the show or whatever but this is not news to me because it's been dead like all this stuff about like oh, well it might come out and then the other stuff it's not it wasn't gonna happen I'm sorry it just it, it, there's no network that was gonna take a chance on it at, at this point yeah. Once that once yeah. CW said no, that was the end right there. Yeah. Which they even 
really kind of didn't say no. They were just like, oh, let's see what the fan basis is. And then they just never kind of like, they kind of slinked away from it yeah. and just didn't say anything. It's unfortunate. So, but yeah, the show yeah, got fucked. The showrunner came out and basically was like, yeah, man, it's, it's dead. Like, we can't keep trying to push for it. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It's bullshit. The show got fucked. It was a damn good show. So it's, yeah. yeah, it's really unfortunate, but I mean, you know, I, I could, well, am I going to say I'm surprised? No, not really. Now here's the funny thing though, because like that was a more dark supernatural based show. Um, but as far as based against like the comics, it was very like, not as dark as it could have been, right. you know, like the Hellblazer stuff. Now Fox, however, is doing the Lucifer, uh, doing the show based off the Lucifer comics and like all they've just mentioned this and like shown some stuff for it. And already there are like people ups in arms about it. Apparently over 1 million mothers have um, signed a petition to basically have it like not even aired the pilot. And you can sign up with one hand and shit in the other and see which one gets full first. I mean, it is interesting because, like, I mean, the numbers are growing daily, though. So that's the thing. I mean, that's that's a lot of people against your show. And I mean, I can kind of understand because that is a very. That's a, a very interesting comic to go for. Yeah, I like, was not ever, never, ever really an avid reader of the comic. But I will say this. I get really annoyed by people who blindly protest things. Or who yeah. look at a concept for something, or just a vague thing. Like I, I hate to use this example because I know you're not a fan of them, but this this is something that often happened to like the ICP people. These you yeah. know uninformed uh, religious right jackasses constantly protested them for shit that they didn't know anything about. And whether the stuff they yeah. did was fucking objectionable or not, you don't know yeah. because you don't have the fucking wherewithal to go and do the research on it. It's just like people who uh, uh, fucking uh, in Congress when they were protesting Mass Effect and saying – and these mothers were saying it was a sex game. Now, you and I have both played all the Mass Effects games. You get to have sex once in those games, (laughs) like one time each game. Like it's, I was about to say, I was like, if they were bullshit. like all up in arms about Mass Effect sex, I want them to just watch somebody play The Witcher. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, the thing is, Witcher is not subject to that shit because it wasn't made here. Where we have yeah. the, you know, the, you know, the one million motherfuckers merge who's spending yeah. time, you know, when they could be doing something useful like shutting the fuck up. Uh, you know, they're out there protesting some shit they know nothing about. Uh, but I mean, you yes, know what I'm saying, though. Like, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be an yeah. asshole, and I, I respect women. And I highly respect women, but I hate these fucking. But, okay, yeah, it is one of those bitches things that do like, this shit. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. I, I mean, I understand the reason for the Lucifer thing, though, because it's, it's probably a majority, like, probably all of them are, you know, of a certain religious background. And that is very oppositional to their belief system. And, like, you know, they're making a show about it. It's pretty, like, and it's not like it's on HBO or something. Okay, yeah, like, but they're, the thing they're is, though, basis. this is not the first time this has happened. This is not the first time that the devil or Lucifer or Satan or whatever has been, like, a main driving force or a character uh, yeah. in, in a fucking network television show. It's happened in multiple shows over the past few years. It happened in Reaper. It's happened in fucking... Um, and Reaper didn't last that long, it did, though. But That's not because like, of shit like that. It was because of ratings and, and issues of that nature and, and problems with the studio and stuff. But it was a popular show, and it was never protested for shit like that. That's because it was, like, viewed as, like, yes, the devil was in there, but it was, like, there was ways of getting around it. The, this one is just straight up called Lucifer. Like, it's basically... That's, that's what they're basing this off of. It was, like... Had the name probably been something else, there probably wouldn't be as much bitching going on, at least right now, until the show started. But it is like, you got like the name is pretty much what got them all up in arms. And it's like, you know, that's that's the thing. They're, you know, they're, I would they're love against to do a fucking experiment. 
where I would name a show Satan, but the show would have nothing to do with Satan. And then I would see how many of these numble fucks would protest it when it really had nothing to do with the thing that they were protesting. Because I guarantee And then make another show that's like exactly fluffy like gumball hour yeah. and it's all about demonic shit. <laughs> I want to fucking take two shows. One of them's called Satan and one of them's called Happy Fun Time Fuck You Hour. And the Happy Fun Time Fuck You Hour is going to be about fucking, uh, you know, butt fucking uh, Christians with a spike dildo. And the Satan show is going to be about a happy puppy in a meadow. And I want to see how many motherfuckers yeah. protest the wrong show. <laughs> That'd be interesting, <laughs> like all based off like just the name of the show, <laughs> like not even you don't even know the pilot synopsis. <laughs> people are stupid. People try very hard to be offended and people don't have any fucking wherewithal about doing research on something before they get all up in arms and pissed off about it. That's true. Shit like that just I mean. really fucking gets me. <sighs> I have had no sleep and, I, and that just raged me out. <laughs> it's all right. But uh, but it is. It is, though. <sighs> The subject material is pretty dark. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I can understand, like I said, I can understand from their point of view, from a religious background, them bitching about it because, you know, based off what the title is and what the show is, it is something very in opposition of what their belief system is. So I expect to see way more moms bitching about it, but hey, you it's know what Fox. They do? So it's, Here's it's, a really, it's, it's, like, really easy way to solve that problem. Don't watch it. Yeah. You don't have to watch That's it. Not how nobody's it. telling you to watch yeah. it. Nobody's making me. I hate Dancing with the Stars, but ain't nobody making me watch the motherfucker. <laughs> That's because America loves Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, Dancing with the Stars is the real Lucifer. <laughs> Actually, I'll take Dancing with the Stars over American Idol any day of the week. Yeah, well, these are the same motherfuckers that watch the Duggar Family Show, so I, don't, I, I have nothing for the opinions of these fucks. Yeah. So now here's another fun one that'll probably incite some rage for you. Uh, there was a inter- interview uh, recently with uh, our favorite director, if you want to call him that, uh, M. Night Shyamalan, Shababalam, uh, M. Night Shababalam, um, you know, who directed such fair of, and, uh, oh God, uh, crap movie. Um, they did an interview with him where they were talking and somehow they got on the subject of like, you know, the uh, the Avatar, the last Airbender movie that he did, which we all know notoriously was horrible. And like, oh, God, it was just really bad. And they asked him, like, OK, so it's been so many years since it and stuff. And you know what happened? Like, you know, if you could probably, like, go back or, you know, how do you feel about that stuff? And instead of, like, you know, being an adult and digesting the criticism, being like, OK, well, maybe I should have done this. M. Night Shyamalan decides that he wants to say, in his mind, the reasoning for why his movie flopped was nothing to do with what the movie was. It was all the fans. It was the people that went to go see it. Yes. And- he said that apparently they expected something other than what he made. Yeah, they probably expected a movie based on the fucking subject material. They probably expected yeah. to see Asian actors playing Asian characters. Yeah. They probably expected something that wasn't the cinematic equivalent of a fucking wet fart. And that's the thing. That's the thing that people talked about, like, was he tried to blame it on people like Michael Bay and the Transformers movies that he made a kid friendly, like he made a, a kid's movie and people went in expecting to see some sort of CGI Michael Bay, Meg, Megan Fox explosion fest And what was funny, because, like, after this article, all the comments were like, no, none of us went in expecting to see that, dude. Like, you're an idiot. Like, every one of them were like, no, we went in expecting to see a kid's movie that appealed to all ages, like the actual show did. And we expected to see people of the right ethnicity playing these characters. And we expected these characters' names to be pronounced correctly. Like... And we expected the movie to make sense and the graphics to look decent. They were like, none of these things happen. We didn't expect the queen's like, hair to look like a giant dick. Yeah, like, it was just bad. Like, they said it was bad all around. Like, there wasn't... Nobody had expectations of it being a Michael Bay film. They expected it to be like the cartoon, which plenty of them were like, you could tell he didn't even care about what the cartoon was. Like, 
it was just a shit story. This is not a mystery but, that he is do- doing this to me. What's the bigger mystery is how this motherfucker keeps getting work. This is the mystery to me because – And that's what somebody else said on nothing. there. He's like, how does he keep making movies? He's done you know two why? decent movies in his entire fucking career. Now, okay, now which which two? Are you going to get – Sixth Sense is the given. Yeah. And like, what, Signs? Oh, Unbreakable? See, some people flip-flop back between Unbreakable and Signs. Signs is terrible. I'm sorry. I know people like Signs. Signs is fucking terrible. It makes less than no sense. It's like a fucking... The acting in it is absolutely terrible. Joaquin Phoenix looks like he's high on mescaline the entire fucking time. Uh, Mel Gibson, that's probably the worst performance I've ever seen out of Mel Gibson, unless it was at a sobriety checkpoint. Like, I fucking hated that movie. Eh. I, I... I don't have any issues against it. I'm not going to be like, yeah, it was one of the best ones. No, I'll take Unbreakable over all of them any day of the week. For me, That uh, that's like the best one he's ever done. The Village is awful, and it was a fucking bait-and-switch cocksucker joke. Uh, let's yeah. see. Lady in the Water was absolutely unwatchable. Uh, fucking, I mean, do, do we have to go on? Of course, we're talking about Avatar. There, like, name anything that he's done oh. besides the two, maybe, if you're generous, three decent things. Oh, come on, man. What about Marky Mark and The Happening? Fuck the fucking ha- The Happening is one of the <laughs> worst movies I've ever seen in my life. It's like they made a movie specifically to be on Mystery Science Theater. Yeah, that's pretty much like what everybody was like, yeah, The Happening. And no offense against more. Marky Mark, but uh, he's not a believable teacher. He's barely a believable human. <laughs> <sighs> Fair enough, but yeah, it it is. It was just like, man, somebody literally has been feeding this guy like his own shit the whole time because he's just all about. You know who stuff. it is, and you Him. know, he, yeah, he thinks he's an amazing or like or shit like, oh, Will Smith's gonna come and basically you know, have you make a movie so that he can be in it with his son, which, oh God, that thing flopped hard. Yes, you know why? Because yeah. it's fucking grizzly shit. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Shit, I, I can't do it. I just can't. I'm so like fucking drained right now. Of, like four hours sleep in two days, whatever. I'm like, fuck, I'm like, shut a bobble on. I don't give no fuck. He can go to the village and uh, fucking, you know, jump out in front of a fucking car and get run over for all I care. Uh, I, I don't I give just, a shit. Just, His movies suck. They're going to continue to suck, and I don't fucking care. Yeah. Uh, it's just funny though that like he would go so far as to like to blame the fans. He's a fucking pretentious and, like, asshole. This does not surprise me in the least. Yeah, it, it's just funny though because it's like instead of being like, oh, you know, this, this. He tried to blame the fans expecting sort of Michael Bay thing ex- instead of expecting the kid show. When in fact, that's what the fans were expecting was like the kids show and he didn't deliver. But in his mind, he thinks he did. In his mind, he thinks he delivered exactly what the show was. And I'm like, <laughs> how skewed of perspective do you have that that in your mind, that's what the movie is. In your in your mind, you think the kids show is nothing but a bunch of white people. <laughs> I'm telling you, who are what, apparently saying names wrong. I would, I would bet good money that he's never seen the show. Oh, probably not. I would bet good. Somebody probably money. explained to him what it was. Like, oh yeah, there's the show. And I, I can't, do, I can't talk about this shit. It just it, it enrages me. He too Wikipedia, it. Wikipedia, he Wikipedia, like, yeah, he the, the show. Fucking Scott of filmmakers. Uh, fucking, I can't do it. Like, I, I, we have to end the show on a positive note. I have to end the show on a positive note. It's time to end anyway. We have to end on a positive note. So I'm going to tell you the last thing I'm going to talk about. positive for me. The last thing I'm going to talk about today is Jack in the Box and the glory that is Jack in the Box. Ah, yes. You're finally finally welcome to Jack in the Box cherry today. I had never been to a Jack in the Box before because they really have never had them here. That's because they're mostly – I grew up with them out west. Yeah. Them, in and out Del Taco, all the – stuff like that. Uh, so when they started bringing Jack in the Box out here, I was really excited because everybody gets to experience the awesomeness that is Jack in the Box. Well, on the way back from Indy, we stopped at uh, Jack in the Box, and I'm going to tell you, it was fucking glorious. It was one of the best burgers in a fast food setting I've ever had in my life. The The service was great. Everything was like crazy fresh. Uh, I loved everything about it. I both uh, Tara and I both got stuff that we loved. Like It was just, I, I couldn't say, I couldn't I say love- enough about it. 
the the food the service is always really good but the thing i love about it is like the diversity yes. oh, of God. the menu they have so many things i mean what other place can you go to where they have cheeseburgers tacos egg rolls fucking just like crazy shit like i i'll say it like this is a a and some of them like i if i recall correctly used to be like 24 hours oh, the, yeah this one was definitely and it, all the ones we found in india were 24 hours yeah it, like literally Jack in the Box is a stoner's paradise of 24 hours food because it's like literally it's like that scene from half bake. I'll go to the store, man. What do you want? And then they start just naming off like all kinds of shit. And it's like half that shit you can go to Jack in the Box and get. Yes. It, They're one yeah. of the few places where you can get fucking chicken nuggets and then you can get dinosaur shaped chicken and nuggets. And I did too because they were out of regular chicken nuggets when I ordered my 10 piece and they're like, um, all we got left is dinosaur chicken nuggets. And then the guy stopped behind the counter and he's like, but that's awesome because they're twice as big as the regular ones. So yay for you. And I'm like, yeah, man, yay for me. Yeah. <laughs> chicken motherfucking nuggets. Like, come on. Yeah. Like chicken nuggets, curly fries, tacos, fucking egg rolls, they were bacon out of tacos, burgers. Which like- was sad because we were going to try some tacos. But uh, uh, the curly fries were epic. And what I love, this is such a weird little thing. And I told you about this, and it's funny. But, like, uh, when they on their condiment bar, like, they have the ketchup like normal. But then they had a fucking ranch dispenser. And that just blows my yeah. mind because I've never seen a restaurant have something like this before. Because ranch is always one of those things, like, they give you a little packet of it. And you have to ask for a bunch of them. And you might have to pay extra and all bullshit. No. They're a big, giant vat of that shit. And you can have as much as you want. And it was fucking beautiful. Yeah. Oh, and they're also known for their milkshakes. Yes, which unfortunately I was too damn full to partake in by the end of the thing. Yeah, yeah but Jack in the Box is like, it's just amazing. Because it's like, you know, sometimes you're like, uh, I want this, but I also want this. So I have to go to a couple different places. Like, we've done this before. Where mm-hmm. We're like... I want nuggets, but I want, like, I want a burger from Arby's, but I want, like, Burger King nuggets, and I want fries from here or some shit like mm-hmm. that. So you're driving to a bunch of different places. Well, Jack in the Box was, like, that, you know, like, end-all, be-all of, like, man, it's got most of the shit I want. Like, fuck yeah, I want some tacos, some egg rolls, and a milkshake. And I tell you, like, my standards were, were very high walking in the door because, like, I passed up one of Hardee's. Like, I passed, like, four Hardee's to get to this Jack in the Box, and I don't normally do that because yeah. I love me some Hardee's. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? When I was done, I was like, man, fuck Hardy's, man. This shit's good. <laughs> yeah. I love Hardy still, but this this this, this is the winner. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I could get a burger and egg rolls. I love egg rolls. <laughs> I do. I love them. <laughs> but That's yeah, right. if we if we do uh, if everything goes as planned and we get to go down for Indie Popcorn, I will be just belligerently beating the crap out of the jack in the box. <laughs> yeah. It'll be two in the morning. Nothing like, like where are we going to eat today? Jack, Jack in the box. box. Jack in the box. <laughs> Jack in the box. It's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> I don't. Blame you. I haven't had Jack in the box in forever, but I would love to go back. We're gonna wreck it like Ralph. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, "Welcome to Jack in the box." Maybe, maybe, take your order. We're like, "I want to wreck it." <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Maybe we'll see your uh, your hooded hooker again. And the happy hooker of the Super Eight Motel. <laughs> The happy hooded hooker of Super now, Let me ask you a question there, sports fan. If you had actually been with me, what, what how would you have reacted to this? Oh, I'd have asked what the tr- the fucking <laughs> trucker special was. I don't even care. I would have asked. <laughs> would have been like, and then we have the trucker special. I'd have been like, okay, what the fuck is that? Because I need to know. Like, how much was it, too? How much was the trucker special? Yeah. Uh, 275 Okay, so that's got to be some shit. I, I you know what? You, the first thought I had was like, uh, fucking like full anal, and like, uh, you know, maybe put your balls in there too. Like, <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, because it's like, man, it's truckers, so they're into some freaky, yep. dirty, nasty shit. I wonder if it was like some golden shower shit uh, too. Uh, like, I would have had to ask. She would have been like, well, then there was the truck. I was like, is that like a ZJ? Like, what is it? Like, <laughs> tell me. I need to know. What's Fucking, I'd, I'd have brought out, you know, honestly, I probably would have brought out my phone and been like, can we interview you? Like, you know what's so funny? Tara said the same thing. And I said, I just, uh, if it was a cop, I didn't want to fucking like chance that shit, you know? Why? You can ask. <laughs> Uh, they would have been like, well, are you trying to proposition? I'd be like, motherfucker, you said trucker special. I need to know. Anywhere where there's like a special, I always ask what it is. Tell me what truckers get. What's so special about it? 
trucker clock who like, wants it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, I need to know. God damn it. Curiosity is a bastard. Well, I promise and now, we go, when we go to Indie Popcon, if the hooker is there, I'll let you interview her. <laughs> All right, I'm going to interview the hooker. It'll be great. <laughs> I imagine her name must be like Destiny or something like that. Cinnamon or Cinnamon. some shit like With that. With a Y. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, on that happy note about the happy hooker, we're going up on the hour mark. We're actually a little past. The happy hooded hooker. The happy hoodie hooker. <laughs> happy hooded hooker. She was the Ben Riley of hookers. <laughs> yeah. We got to get nerdy and dirty in there. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's going to go ahead and wrap it up this week uh, from the basement as usual. I'm Todd. No, I'm Dave. And until next time, the basement door is closed. For hookers. For hookers who get to fuck her in a pussy. <laughs> 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 <laughs>